I'm going to talk to you today about living in the land of vision. All right. That's good because vision is the most important thing while you're on earth. God wants to give you vision for your life. Now listen with me, Genesis 13, 14. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him. There's a lot that's been separated from you this year. Yeah? Has anyone felt that? There's been things taken away? And whenever God removes things, it's because he wants to upgrade you and he wants to give you fresh sight. And some of us have felt that the stripping away of things that we felt found security from, things that even routine in our life has been stripped away. God's setting us up. God never takes something from us that he doesn't replace over and over and over again. That's the goodness of God. He says, lift up your eyes now and look. And that's my prayer for you today, that you would lift up your eyes and look. Not your physical eyes, but your spiritual eyes. That you would lift them up and begin to see what God sees. Because God sees a whole lot more for your life than you see currently. Do you believe that? Hello? Do you believe that? God is seeing something over your life that you're not seeing yet. And that's okay. That's the same for all of us. But now the invitation is to lift up our eyes and to begin to partake of all that God sees. He says, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. Look north, south, east, and west. Is there any direction that's not covered? (laughs) So in other words, in every area of your life, I want you to get a new paradigm. Not just in one area, not just in healing. Well, I'll take the healing part, but not the prosperity. I'll take the prosperity, but not moving in the things of the Spirit. I'll take that, but I won't take that. God says in every direction of your life, I want to upgrade your vision. That's exciting, hey? But I just want to focus on one thing. No, no, focus on everything. God wants to upgrade you. For all the land which you see, you should underline this in your Bible in red, blue, green, any color you can find. This is such a critical statement. For all the land that you see, I give to you. Did that register in your heart? Everything that you can see, everything that God shows you, everything you can see in the Spirit is then an invitation to possess. You cannot possess what you don't see. So going into this season, well, I need to be able to see what I haven't been able to see before. God is saying, whatever you can see, I will give to you. There are no limitations. Whatever you can vision in your heart, that is what you can have. If you can see yourself healed, you shall be healed. If you can see yourself prosperous, you shall be prosperous. If you can see this church exploding, it shall explode. I mean, in a good way. If you can see this whole city one for Jesus, it shall be one. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So if a man could number the dust, so shall they be. That's amazing. So that's the unlimited nature of our God in heaven. And then God says in verse 17 to Abram, Arise and walk in this land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. Now get into that vision, walk in it, in your mind, possess it, for I'm about to give it to you. When we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we are baptized into a lifestyle of dreams and visions. Acts chapter 2 says, In the last days I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, all flesh, all flesh. And he says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And he talks about them, that the young will have uh, visions, the old will dream dreams. It's the language of the Spirit. And what I want to impart in you today is this. The way forward in this next season to accelerate is to partner with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit always operates through dreams and visions by giving us pictures of that which we can't see. And when I can see something, I can have it. Are you getting this? So whatever it is that you're going to accelerate in, you will have to see it 
and then you possess it. You'll have to get alone with the Holy Ghost and ask him for the vision that Father has for your life. And you don't leave that place until the vision has come alive inside you. You ponder it and you meditate and you wait upon him for you know that the moment I get a picture from God, it is as good as done. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God was not telling Abraham to look in this story with natural vision, but with the infinite vision of the inner man. Abraham, with his natural eyes, could see so far. See, some people, and and I'm not saying this is wrong, but some people say that Abraham, he he got up on that mountain and he looked and he saw with his natural eyes, and as far as his natural eyes could see, that was the inheritance for Israel. And if he had have got up a bit higher and saw further, then Israel would own the whole world. I, I, I get what they're saying physically, but I think there's so much more because Romans says that because we're the seed of Abraham, we are the heir of the whole world. What Abraham did in that day, he began to see with the eyes of faith and he stretched to the north, the south, the east, the west until his vision covered the entire world from that little place that he stood in. You see, he he entered into the realm of the spirit that supersedes the realm of the natural. And so to you, if you try to look with your own physical eyes at your circumstance, you may be able to imagine yourself getting $100,000, $1,000,000, $100,000, a million dollars, or having, having a, a, a nice sort of life or reaching one person for Jesus. But when you go into the realm of the spirit, you go into the unlimited realm where you begin to see what God sees. And he says, as far as you can see, that will I give you. As far as you allow me to dream in your heart, that is yours today. There is no limit to what God can do. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that I could ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within me. In other words, he's saying there's no limit to what Holy Ghost can put in my spirit. The only limitation will be what I can think and say. They are my limitations. So I want to get into his realm of vision and dreams for my life. Clear vision will bring a driving passion to your life. Let me tell you some things about vision. Vision produces faith. This is why a lot of people get it wrong because what they do is they try to get faith without vision. So they think if I just, if I just quote the Bible about a certain thing, you know, I'm prosperous, I'm prosperous or whatever the scripture they get, they think that that's their way forward. Now that's a good thing to do, but vision produces faith. You see, if I can't see it in my spirit, I can't have it. You can, you can quote the scriptures for the rest of your life, but if you have a picture, an inner picture of poverty, of brokenness, then that will always circumvent what comes out of your mouth because the heart and the mouth have to work together. Amos 3, 3, two have to work together. They have to walk together before God can move. See, the Bible says about husbands and wives that if they don't come together in unity their prayers are hindered and it's both true in the natural and true in in our inner world that if our spirit and soul are out of alignment and our mouth is saying one thing but the inner picture of our heart is saying another thing our prayers are always hindered and so I must get the pictures that God has I wait upon him until there is a seed from the spirit of God into my spirit man and I begin to see what God sees in my life You cannot afford to go into this decade without pictures from the Holy Ghost. And you might say, well, I don't know if he wants to give me one. My friend, he wants to give you one. That's the language of the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, he has come to give you pictures and dreams for your life. That is his language. That's like saying, you know, your wife doesn't want to speak to you. She'll speak if you listen. Vision produces faith and it produces acceleration. Remember I've told you that one hour of meditation is equal to a hundred hours of toil. We can sweat, we can work, we can strive. And I'm beginning to discover this this, is that if I will wait on the picture from God and allow him to paint a picture in my heart and come into agreement with it, it is far more effective than me trying to naturally make something happen. 
I've proven this in many realms of my life, finances, in healing, in ministry, that if I will get the picture from God, it will accelerate me into the purposes of God. One hour of meditation, never forget this, one hour of laying on your bed saying, Holy Spirit, give me vision and dreams. Well, I tried that for now and it didn't work. Oh, my goodness. Well, you've been toiling for hours and hours and hours, and that hasn't worked either. So I suggest to you that you understand this, that the more you meditate and wait on the Lord, the more you wait on the Lord, the more you wait on the Lord, you, your strength will be renewed. It says those that wait on the Lord, they, it, they will rise up like, with wings like eagles. What he's saying, you'll begin to get a perspective, an eagle is, is a picture of the prophetic. You'll begin to rise up and see what others don't see. You wait and you wait and you wait. And in the waiting, God's changing your heart and preparing you for the picture he's about to deposit. Here's the problem. If you waited for just an hour and God gave you the picture, it'd blow your brains apart. And so in the waiting, God is expanding you. So when the picture comes, you don't abort the picture. You say, I can agree with that. And in the waiting comes this expansion. And all of a sudden, the picture comes and acceleration comes. One hour of meditation is equal to 100 hours of toil. Stop sweating, striving, and wait upon the Lord. And He will give you a picture for your life. You know, it's been, it's been sometimes I've waited on the Lord and it's like, you know, I felt His presence, but no real pictures. And then I'll just get up and I'll be walking through the day and all of a sudden, in a flash, I'll get a picture of my future. It'll just come to me. I think, where did that come from? It's Funny question to ask, isn't it? From the Holy Spirit. Vision produces faith. It'll produce acceleration. And it will drive you. You don't make the vision, the vision makes you. You don't drive the vision, the vision drives you. The moment you get a vision in your heart, it will give you motivation to get out of bed in the morning. Amen. See, laziness, most people aren't lazy because they enjoy being lazy. I can't get out of bed today. Well, he's a lazy little thing. No, no, he's not lazy. He just doesn't have vision. That's right. He doesn't have purpose. Yeah. He doesn't have a picture burning in his heart. He's got no reason to get out of bed. Mm. But when God puts a picture in your heart, you spring out of bed. You wake up even before bed. You should wake up because you've got a passion in your heart Amen. because you've seen what God's seen for your life yeah. and you can agree with that. Yeah, that's vision drives you. The most driven people and I mean in the good sense, are those filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul was driven, not out of his strength, but the Holy Ghost had arrested his heart and he had a picture for his life. And when vision comes, it will not just accelerate you and drive you, but it will multiply you. Here's the thing about vision. When God begins to bless you, it never stops. You should give him a big thank you for that. Did you hear what I said? When God begins to bless you, it never stops. First the, the blade, then the head, then the full grain. Two talents, five talents, ten. The, the Bible says that the kingdom is an ever-increasing kingdom. The way of the wise winds up. Everything about the kingdom is multiply, multiplication and increase. And when you get a picture in your heart from God... It will never, ever stop. Because you know what will happen? You'll fulfill that first picture and God says, thank you very much. Now I've got another one. And it's bigger and grander. and It's going to take even more. And you do that and he says, I've got an upgrade again. And right through your life, God will keep giving you bigger and bigger pictures for your life. How many people want a picture today from the Holy Ghost? <sighs> Seven times in Scripture, God asks, what do you see? Seven times in Scripture, he says, what is it that you see? It's interesting that seven times in Scripture, God refers to barren wombs. There's a connection between what we see and what we carry. Is it a coincidence that God asks seven times what you see? And then there are seven women that carry nothing in their wombs. See, when our spiritual sight is shut down, we alienate ourselves from the life of God. And I often say this to men. This is a challenge for many men because as we grow up with all our sexual drives and urges and issues, and 
particulars. Our minds and our imaginations can play havoc on us, so we shut down that area out of survival. Suppress it, <coughs> tie it up, put a padlock on it. Here's the problem is that that same realm that God wants to speak and move in our lives is now shut off. God wants to open up the whole area of pictures and dreams and imagination, sanctify it, purify it, and pour out His glory in it. Seven times God says, what do you see? See, the Father's thoughts come from His Spirit to our spirit as a seed. They come into our spirit. As we wait upon Him, all of a sudden we get a seed from God deep in our spirit. So that tells us that our spirit man is incredibly important. And that's a problem for many people because most Christians don't know anything about their spirit. All they know is that their spirit was born again when they got born again, and that's great. But here's the thing. If God's communication of vision and dream comes from his spirit to my spirit, I'm going to have to understand and locate where my spirit is and the language that God speaks, I'm going to have to identify how that flows and how I can educate my spirit to take more and more pictures and dreams. Are you getting this? You can actually do this. As a believer, you can grab a hold of your spirit and educate it and, and, and train it and grow it so it is able to perceive more and more of the pictures of God. God says in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to... Okay, and not to ha harm you, yeah. So if God has all these plans to prosper you, he must have pictures that he wants to give to you, yeah? Is that true? Yeah. The Bible talks about the thoughts of God towards us. They're more vast than the, the sand of the, on, on the seashore. The, you know, I know the thoughts I have towards you, just un, unlimited. So God's got all these pictures. So I'll ask you again, how many people think that God has pictures for their life? All right, so it's increased. That's good. Well, that was handy. <laughs> so if that be the case, why don't we receive them? What's wrong? Why don't I see them all? Well, the issue is, is that pictures come from Holy Spirit to our spirit. That's the way they deposit. He puts his seed in our spirit. It's spirit to spirit communication. No man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man is in him. That's what 1 Corinthians tells us, that you cannot pick up anything from God except by his spirit to our spirit. And if God has all these pictures for me and they come from his spirit to my spirit, then here's the key. I have to locate my spirit, train my spirit, educate my spirit to receive pictures from God. Does that make sense? And so we talked a few weeks about this, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it today, but we talked about legitimizing our spirit man. Again, most Christians don't talk to their spirit man. Can I talk to my spirit? Of course you can. Talk to your soul. The psalmist says, rise up, soul. Why are you so downcast? Praise him. Does it not say that? So you know you're supposed to talk to yourself, don't you? See, we, we do that in the negative. We let our imagination run wild with worry and anxiety and fear. You're constantly communicating to yourself. Oh, I better watch out. Could I have a car accident? Where are my kids? Maybe they had an accident. You know, um, maybe my, I'm going to lose my job this year. We, we have all these thoughts. And so on the flip side, in the realm of the spirit, we need to educate and train and speak to our soul, our spirit, and tell it, what its job is, legitimize ourselves. Wake up and say, today I say over myself, Andrew McGrath, I am a man that is filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit today is speaking to my spirit. So I speak to my spirit, man. I legitimize you. I say, I thank you, Father, today that you've made me born again, that I have the fullness of God inside me. The moment I was born again, 
I received all of God in me. And I know now that that fullness like a baby has to be developed. So I say to my spirit man, like Jesus who grew in wisdom and stature with God, with favor with God and man, I say to my spirit man, you are going to rise up today. You are going to be listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You're going to be attentive to his ways. So I, I tell my soul, my mind, my natural mind, my will, my emotions to come under the covering of my spirit. I say to my body, that you will, every physical part of me, you will come under submission and you will listen to what the voice of the Spirit is saying. And so now I bring myself into alignment and I'm ready to receive the word of the Lord today. Yeah. Paint yeah. your pictures on my heart. If every Christian in the world did that, we would, the church would be totally different. Yeah. We begin to receive more and more visions and dreams from God. But when you live your whole day, you're unaware of your spirit, unaware of Holy Spirit speaking to you, is it any wonder that the pictures and dreams that God has for you lay dormant? So that, what did God say to Abraham? Arise! Lift up your eyes and look. For everything that you can see in the spirit, I shall give to you. Yeah. Is this helping anybody today? Now, here's a great scripture. Turn to Genesis 38. Are you ready? Yeah. Genesis 38, 8. Here's the thought I want to bring out here. The flesh cannot fill the womb. You cannot receive... See, when, when the Holy Spirit gives you a picture, it comes from His Spirit to my spirit. And as it comes to my spirit, it filters down into my soul. What do I mean by that? Into my conscious awareness. It sits there. And this is why I tell you, church, to renew your soul. Because if your soul isn't renewed to the language of the Spirit, the Word of God, it doesn't think the thoughts of God, it will reject everything that comes from your spirit. Your spirit will pick up words from God that says, resist the devil and he will flee. Maybe you've got sickness and you just want to roll over and play dead. And the Holy Spirit speaks to your spirit and says, you know what, you've got authority over the devil. And all of a sudden, you get a flash of yourself being whole that comes to your, your awareness or your soul, but your soul is so unrenewed, it's so used to being defeated, it rejects the word of the Lord and aborts the seed. Does that make sense? Yeah. But when your womb is alive to the, the, the word of the Lord, it will take that seed, it will put it in, in the soul or the womb of your heart, and then it will begin to nurture that until it bears fruit. Amen. But the flesh can't fill the womb. So you can't, you can't get pictures of your future. You can't progress and advance in your own natural ability. And I'll tell you, read this story. Judah. Judah is a picture of that which is of the spirit, right? He said to his son Onan, Onan means natural strength. So if you're writing notes, you can write this about Judah. It's a picture of the spirit. And he says to, he, he, has, he defers to his natural strength. He says, go into your brother's wife. Her name was Tamar. And her, her name means, um, it's like a palm tree. It's a picture of the righteous believer. Right? Good. You go and marry her. So it, it's, it's the spirit deferring to the natural strength and says, you know what, church? We can do it in our own natural strength. The church can embrace natural strength and find success. You go and marry her and raise her up to be an heir to your brother. So what had happened is Tamar's original husband had done evil against the Lord and God had taken him out. And so she had no one to, 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 to give her an inheritance. And so Judah had given Tamar his son, and his son's name was Onan. And it says in verse 9, Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And so when it came to pass, he went into his brother's wife and he admitted on the ground. I know it sounds gross, but there's a picture here. So instead of giving her a baby, he has the pleasure of the act and withdraws and doesn't give her a child. And God saw that and took him out. You see, there are things that we embrace in our inner world that don't bring inheritance. There's pictures that we embrace that don't give us what God wants to give us. Pictures of natural strength, 
pictures of fear, pictures of doubt. And all they do is, is, is they, they just leave us empty and barren. And if you've got to the end of this year and there's areas of your life that are empty inside, it's because you've embraced things of the natural strength. Because whenever the Spirit of God enters you, whenever you get, the vision, get vision from the Lord, it will always leave your womb full. See, the strength of the flesh can't impregnate you. It may give you temporary pleasure. So here's the thing. You get a vision for your life. If I just had a new car, a new wife, money, a holiday, you know, we just, we're living for the holiday. I can't wait to think if I get my four weeks and you'll leave, I'll be okay. Yeah, that's right. It stimulates you, but doesn't impregnate you. That's right. And so you get back at the end of the holiday, you've had stimulation, but you're still as empty inside. Yeah. Is that making sense? And God wants to give you a picture from the Spirit, from His very Spirit that will impregnate you and cause you to truly live every single day with purpose and motivation because you've encountered the Holy Ghost. And when He, when he comes and He has a relationship with you, He will leave you pregnant and full. Hmm. So Judah ends up by having a relationship with his woman, Tamar, and Tamar produces twins, Perez and Zerah. And isn't it interesting that these two children, their names mean breakthrough and a new day. And when the Holy Ghost comes and impregnates you with his purpose and his thoughts, you're going to get your breakthrough and you'll get a new day. And, and, and also it means new day and brightness. Revelation will come. Purpose will come. You'll wake up and it's like everything has changed because now you're living impregnated with the pictures from heaven. Give the Lord a hand. And here's the thing. Once the seed of God comes into our spirit and we receive that, it's then passed to the womb of our heart, which is our conscious understanding. Until man has an access to a womb, the purposes of God remain potential. And this is where your soul is going to come into, into its own in 2020, is that we're going to both wait on the Lord to get his pictures and we're going to renew our soul so when the seed of the Lord comes, the pictures of God come from our spirit into our soul, there will be a divine yes. I'm, I am... I'm pretty sure that some of the pictures that I don't perceive in my heart are there in my spirit right now, but my soul is not ready for it. I'm frightened. I'm intimidated by the size of the dream that God has for my life. And so I, I then have to say, Lord, renew my soul. Renew my soul. I speak over my soul. And that's where confession comes into, uh, takes a big place in, in the realm. See, I believe tongues, and I don't have time to talk about this, but tongues are a critical thing in activating spirit to spirit, the seed of the Lord. And confession is a critical thing in activating the enlargement of the soul or the womb. And they come together, both a heavenly language and an earthly language, put in their place to bring the seed of the Lord from his realm into our realm. Is that making sense? Elisha said to the, the woman, the widow, what do you have in your house? And she said, I have all this, I have a little jar of oil and that's all I got. We see it again, the oil and the jar. The oil is a picture of the spirit and the jar is a picture of our soul capacity. And the, the oil will keep running as long as as we increase the size of the capacity of our soul. Are you getting this? There's unlimited, this is my conviction, there is unlimited pictures the Holy Ghost has for your life. It staggers my mind. Can you believe that? 
unlimited. If, I, I think when we get to heaven, we will look at the plans and the purposes God had for life and you'll say, really? That's astonishing. Because that's the heart of God. He, the Bible says that we will be filled unto all the fullness of God. So he has these amazing plans. And this is not a throwaway line. I know the plans to have for you, plans to prosper. It's not, it's not like that at all. If God has a plan, look at how he created the world. That was a plan. It's astonishing. With the word of God, everything that he created, and so much that we haven't even discovered after all these years, that was a plan of God. And remember I've said to you, he spent 50 chapters talking about the, the, the makeup of a man in the tabernacle. And he spends just a few chapters on the creation of the world. It tells me in the mind of God, there is so much that he wants to impart to us. And I think the issue is that our soul cannot, will not allow the vastness of the pictures of God to fil filter down from our spirit man to our soul. The oil will keep running as long as there was a jar. Increase your soul. Inc speak of your soul. Tell yourself, God wants to prosper me. God wants to enlarge me. I tell myself that. God wants to use me. I keep telling myself over and over again. And as I do that, my soul's enlarging to take the great seeds of God inside me. And then they begin to incubate. Have you heard of the silkworm? Anybody? Yeah. It makes its home by what comes out of its mouth. The silk literally comes out of its mouth. In the figure eight, it spins around himself until he makes a home that he can live in. We are creating inside us a home for the Holy Ghost to come. And take from his heart to my spirit into my home the vast thoughts of God. And we build our soul or our inner home with the words that come out of our mouth. That silkworm, I believe after three weeks, turns into a moth. And out of the mouth of the moth comes, secretes a fluid that breaks down the very house that the silkworm built. And see, by our words, we can build a home that houses the great thoughts of God from our spirit to our soul, or by our words, we can destroy the very home that God wants to build in our life to receive the great thoughts of God. So God says to Abraham, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? So Abraham opens up his spirit and he begins to see what God sees. God begins to drop pictures in his heart. And then God changes, see, God changes both what he sees, listen, and what he says. He changes what he sees so he can receive the pictures from heaven to his spirit. And he changes what he says so then he can incubate the pictures that God has given him. He changes his name from Abram to Abraham. So the pictures that God has given him can now come to birth. Is that making sense? And the invitation for this next year is to see and then to say. But it all begins with seeing whatever you can see. What can you see? When you look over your life, what is it? that you see. What do you see? Abraham, lift up your eyes and look. Can I suggest to you that it's not a waste of time to look and to meditate and to see? I, I guarantee if I looked across this room and those listening on live stream, YouTube, the vast majority of people are so busy running around like a chook without a head that you just don't have, and, and, and it's, it's, it's the, the language that we wear with a badge of honour. And you know what it is. You go up to someone, how have you been? Oh, good. How's work? Oh, really busy. How's life? Oh, yeah, quite busy. Busy, busy. Yeah, lots to do. It's like a badge of honour. 
like, stop, stop, stop being so busy. It's not productive. Because you're inseminating your womb with all these acts of busyness and so-called pleasure, but it's leaving you empty inside. Empty inside and empty to the purposes of God. Stop, slow down and listen and look. And over the course of, as we come into next year, it, it would pay you well to stop all this nonsense. Ah, oh, but I have to. No, you don't have to do anything. All this false expectation. Stop it. Stop it. Slow down. Go for a walk and say, God, paint pictures on my heart. My heart's your canvas, you are the painter. And I'm going to keep coming before you each day until I get clearly in my mind the pictures that you have. And you said spirit to spirit you were communing with me. So I open up my spirit as best as I know how. Holy Spirit, here is my spirit. Come and paint your picture. And then, Lord, I pray that as I work with you, let my soul come into agreement. So whenever those pictures come into my consciousness, there will be a yes! I can do that. So what do you see? This is a season of acceleration and to accelerate, you've got to see. We thank you today, Lord, for spiritual sight. And right across this building, I ask today that there would be an increase from your spirit to their spirits of spiritual sight, revelation, understanding of your purpose for their life. Implant in their heart dreams and vision. Holy Spirit, your language is dreams and visions. Your language is the pictures of heaven. So come and impart to every heart today fresh vision that would give them motivation, acceleration and fruitfulness, I pray in Jesus' name.